Tonight on X-Play, we bring you the best of 2003, honoring such games as The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, Ratchet & Clank, Going Commando, and The Prince of Persia. Who will win Game of the Year? I bet something will strap in! It's Platitude Time! Welcome to X-Play's Best of 2003 Award Show, pre-recorded live in the beautiful Studio 3 Pavilion. We're honored to introduce your illustrious hosts, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome to X-Play. Tonight, we celebrate the best games of 2003 with pomp, circumstance, and awkward pauses. Morgan? Thank you, Adam. Video games, where would we be without them? Probably playing marbles, rolling an iron hoop down the street, or reading. Uh, mm. Now this year, video games touched our lives, our hearts, and our hands. From breathtaking recreations of the Battle of Normandy to a title that puts the eye in Jedi, we've seen that games can take us to places we've never been before. Places that only exist in the developers' imaginations. Places where you can enter a truly rich and immersive world, and then kill everything that lives in it. Our selection process was a rigorous one. We debated the merits of each game endlessly, often threatening. Uh, Damn it, Carson, vote for freaking uh, Wind Waker! Sometimes firing co-workers who disagreed with us. Look, vote for Deus Ex or you're fired. No, you're fired! You're all fired! And never was there a more heated debate than the one over the category of the year's best game. Now, the nominees for the best game of the year are, wait, we'd have to be stupid to announce that award at the beginning of the show. Instead, Adam will start the show by performing a musical tribute to the nominees. Ooh, uh uh No. Adam will start the show by performing a musical tribute to the nominees. You're supposed to do a medley or something. Hell no. But, but the producer said we needed a musical act. No, no, never mind. Never mind what those community college dropouts past green as producers said. We love games. We love playing them. And we just want to honor the titles that made us enjoy our jobs even more than we already do. Can, can I go back to reading the prompt for now? Fine, just no literacy. Without any further ado, let's get to our first category, Best Fighting Game. And the nominees are... Guilty Gear X2. <laughs> Soul Calibur 2. <laughs> Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution. Capcom vs. SNK2 EO. <laughs> And the winner of the best fighting game is Envelope, please. Soul Calibur 2. Oh! Cool. Those are three little words that translate into hours of fighting joy. The Soul Calibur series has always distinguished itself with its weapons based combat that anyone can get into quickly. Although there's more than enough sweet moves available to the gamer that chooses to spend some time learning their stuff. None of that has changed with version 2 that is now available to any gamer with a modern console. Prettier, better balanced, and it has Link. This is easily the best fighter of 2003. From fighting to shooting, video games have a little violence for everyone. And ever since Wolfenstein 3D was released in 1992, the first person shooter has become a staple of America's video game diet. It's a diet made richer and creamier by the addition of these first person shooters. What the hell did I just read? I have no idea. Let's be honest. The field for best first-person shooter wasn't exactly broad this year. I mean, with games like New World Order and Devastation. Devastation. How do we make this decision? Pretty damn easily. In a year where the first-person shooter found itself cel-shaded, squad-based, and massively multiplayable, one title stood heads and helmets above the rest. And the nominees for best first-person shooter are Call of Duty. Deus Ex Invisible War. Planet Side. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Three. And the winner of the best first person shooter. Oh, do you want to open it or, or should I? I'm gonna open it, I wanna open it. Oh my god, it's Call of Duty! We love you, we really love you! From the moment it starts, you know Call of Duty is different. A first-person shooter is designed to immerse you in the action, and Call of Duty does that better than any other game in its class.
With brilliant teammate and enemy AI active all around you, Call of Duty manages to place you inside the action. You're one of many rather than the sole focus. The result is one of the most exhausting, exhilarating, and terrifying experiences in gaming. If the first person shooter aims to immerse, then Call of Duty takes you as close to actual battle as anyone should want to be. And now we come to the category of best sports game. Sports. A lot of gamers aren't good at them. But within the confines of a simulated world, even a 400 pound man with limited motor skills can be king of the tennis court, or the gridiron, or the waffle iron. Wait for laughter. Smile. Our nominees for best sports game encompass four vastly different athletic events. Three come to us from powerhouse EA Sports, and one comes courtesy of Microsoft. But they all have an ability to entertain both sports fans and gamers alike. And for the first time in 2003, online play on the consoles has become a major factor in our decision. The nominees for best sports game are... NBA Street Volume 2. Madden NFL 2004. Top Spin. <laughs> Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004. And the envelope, please. So my turn to open the damn envelope. And the winner for best sports game is Madden NFL 2004. Oh! Oh! Yes! yes, it comes out every year, but 2003 has been a kind year to the Madden series. The annoying bugs and glitches that have plagued the game have all but disappeared, creating a vision of the gridiron that's as close to the real thing as most of us will ever get. Madden demonstrates a love of the game that's apparent in the depth evident in everything, from the playbook to the unbelievable franchise mode. This is a title that for some never leaves their console from the moment it's popped in. People are fanatical about role-playing games, and why shouldn't they be? Well, for one, many are terrible and feature dying parents and cloying Japanese children on quests. They promise that you'll truly inhabit a role and that your actions will have consequences, but they rarely deliver on that promise. Instead, you have to kill rabbits and wolves for 14 hours. This year, however, one RPG broke new ground and lived up to the hype. The nominees for Best RPG are... Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Golden Sun 2, The Lost Age. Mario and Luigi, Superstar Saga. Disgaea, Hour of Darkness. And the winner is... Star Wars, Knights, Knights of the Old Republic. Republic. <gasps> oh! Knights of the Old Republic is one of the freshest takes on the role-playing game in years. Firstly, by using the science fantasy universe of Star Wars, the genre is liberated from the tired high fantasy and anime settings. More importantly, the game actually lets you play a role. The decisions you make determine the direction the story takes. There is no right or wrong outside of your own ethical compass. How come I get the feeling you're trying to take us for a ride? With an exceptional story, mature treatment of the material, and pacing that doesn't let go of you, Knights of the Old Republic is a landmark title that is easily the best RPG of 2003. Stick around. When we come back, we have more of the year's best games, more awards, and more of the band leader trying to get me to wrap things up. She's one of Femme Fatale's sexiest women of 2003, and his mom reassures him daily. Here are your glamorous co-hosts, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to X-Play's Best of 2003 Award Show. We've got nice clothes and, sadly, a rented band leader. And tonight, we give a little something back to the industry that has given us so much. Carpal tunnel syndrome, an addiction to Red Bull, and accidental exposure to Final Fantasy fan fiction. Smile. But they also made 2003 the year of the platformers. The nominees for best platformer are... Kaya, Dark Lineage. Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando. Jack, Two. Rayman, Three, Hoodlum Havoc. And the winner is... Oh! 
I'm so happy for them. Ratchet and Clank, go in commando. Oh, that's awesome. With the introduction of weapons-based combat, Ratchet and Clank opened up what a platformer could be. Now, with Going Commando, they taught everyone what it should be. With careful attention to level design and complex enemy AI, developer Insomniac Games have made the first truly sophisticated platformer. A game that requires both planning and timing and has so much variety, it could have filled three separate titles. The polish in Going Commando shines so brightly, you start to see the future of a genre in its reflection. And now, the interns. Thanks. It's an honor to be here. They let us out of the cage to present this award, didn't they, Chris? Ad lib? Ad lib. Um, we're here to give the award for best racing game, and before we read the nominees, we wanted to clarify something. They only beat us a little. Wait for laughter. But seriously, we picked up the nominees for this category because in every one of these games... Whether they were trick-based or involved cars or spaceships... Crossing the finish line was the primary objective. And the nominees for best racing game are... SSX3. Project Gotham Racing 2. Mario Kart Double Dash. F-Zero GX. And the winner is Mario Kart Double Dash. Exit stage. Oh. <gasps> yeah, it's not realistic, but it's fun. Mario Kart Double Dash takes a simple concept and makes it one of the most compulsive gaming experiences around. Easy to pick up and play, but near impossible to put down, Double Dash offers a beautiful rendering of one of the most satisfying racing series ever. But it's the multiplayer that gives the game endless appeal. The way it can make four grown adults spend hours yelling in excitement as they hurl turtle shells at one another makes this the best racing game of 2003. For as long as mankind has existed, we've sought adventure. From the caves of primitive man to the... Sound like I'm on the Discovery Channel. Adam? Thanks, Morgan. Mm -hmm. The adventure category combines multiple game styles, combat, puzzle solving, and light RPG elements. This year, the nominees for Best Adventure Game take us from the sands of the Middle East to a creepy carnival, from a mystical quest to a pig with fart-powered boots. Yeah, I read that right. The nominees for Best Adventure are... Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Beyond Good and Evil. Go ahead and look. The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Dark Cloud 2. And the winner is... The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker is exactly what an adventure title should be. With the simple story of heroism, you travel through a vast and cohesive world so filled with character and intrigue that the game comes alive. The engaging puzzles, appallingly enjoyable combat, and near obsessive side quests make Wind Waker one of the hardest games to relinquish in favor of sleep. If that weren't good enough, the risk and reward of its incomparable graphics make it a game you wish would never end. Stick around when we come back. Celebrities, the award for best action game, and later, the award for best game. One, two, play with the milk set. Welcome back to X-Play's Best of 2003 Award Show. Let's welcome two very special guests to the ceremony. If you saw the film The Last Samurai, he'll seem very familiar and appealing to the ladies. And pop culture would have a gaping hole were it not for his portrayal of Richie Tenenbaum. Presenting the award for best graphics, here are Tom Cruise and Luke Wilson, lookalikes. Graphics, they're so much more than just another pretty face. That's right, Tom. Without graphics, there'd be nothing but an empty screen and a lot of confusing noises. Uh, Luke, this year the staff of X-Play judged graphics based on technical and creative achievements. This year brought us cell-shaded superheroes, mystical worlds, 
and dragons flying through waterfalls. Dragons flying through waterfalls? You guys are dorks. Shut up. We're getting paid. <clears throat> the nominees for best graphics are... Beyond Good and Evil. Beautiful Joe. Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge. Panzer, Dragoon, Orton. And the winner is... <laughs> Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge. Can I get my gift back now? While many games look pretty, Crimson Skies has managed to blend technical excellence with amazing visual creativity to create a world that is both slightly familiar and utterly unbelievable. The Goliath buildings, dwarfing natural scenery, and a horizon far in the distance convey a sense of humbling awe while you pilot your aircraft. It's the small and impressive details of the environments and aircraft that drive home all the creative energy in the visuals. The game articulates a parallel past that has no comparison and never ceases to fascinate. It's an honor to be back. Ad lib. Ad lib. <laughs> a strategy. If we were any good at it, we would have found a way to replace Admin Morgan a long time ago. <laughs> the nominees for best strategy game are Rise of Nations, Ghostmaster. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Advance Wars 2 Black Hole Rising. And the winner is Rise, Rise of Nations. Nations. Oh, that's cool. The achievements of Rise of Nations are amazing. Big huge games have returned strategy to the genre by reducing the tedium of managing your resources and giving you several methods of conquering your foes. The fast pacing of the game makes building and protecting your empire a breathless experience as military, economic, and cultural evolution all drive your manifest destiny. Rarely is there a real-time strategy game where the single and multiplayer experiences are equally incomparable, but Rise of Nations excels at both. This is one revolution in gaming we hope conquers all. And now, the award for best action game, and the nominees are... Beautiful Joe. Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. Panzer Dragoon Orda. Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge. And the winner is, the envelope please. Beautiful Joe. Design and gameplay meet and fall in love with one another in one of the most original games since, well, games. With deceptively simple button mechanics, Capcom has created a game that is easy to pick up and becomes obsessively impossible to give up as you confront each new challenge. Here's the rare title where it's no problem to play the same level for the 14th time because it's that pleasurable and fun to play. Add to that a screwball attitude and a visual style without any peer, and you've got exactly what gaming's all about. Imagination and having a damn good time. We're getting down to the moment that you've been waiting for. When we come back, the best game of the year! What? The best game of the year! Huh? Presenting the final award for best game of the year, it's your glamorous co-hosts, Adam Sessler and Morgan Wall. Welcome back to End Place Press of 2003 Show. We reach our final award of the evening. We've seen so much this year that boiling the games down into just five selections for best game was absolutely devastating. Would you? Anyway, every one of these games is an absolute gem. Adam? Thanks, Morgan. Mm -hmm. We really can't say enough, but the quality of the final five, the games in this category are all groundbreaking, genre-defining, and worth every penny. From a game where you choose between the dark side and the light to a title that played like a superhero comic come to life, it was a year full of triumphs. After fierce debate, we boiled it down to five, and from five, only one will emerge victorious. So, 
Without further ado, the nominations. Thank you, Grand Theft Auto 3. The nominees for best game of the year are... The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. Rise of Nations. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Beautiful Joe. And the winner for best game of the year is... Star Wars, Wars Knights, Knights of, of the, the Old Republic. Republic. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. The Knights of the Old Republic is our game of the year, not just because it's a stupendous game, but because developer Bioware took risks by trying to innovate and create something new, and boy, did it pay off. KOTOR is one of those rare games that rewards you for really playing the game. The more you investigate and talk to other characters, the richer and more complex the story becomes. But it's the way in which you as the player feel that you're actually having an impact on the story rather than being led by the hand through a fixed narrative that sets this game far apart from its peers. Your actions have real repercussions. As you slip to either the darker light side, your involvement in the game becomes a creative act in itself. Knights of the Old Republic has set a new high water mark for games, and we're proud to reward it by proclaiming it to be the best game of 2003. It's been a great year full of special gaming memories, and we're glad you shared them with us. Thanks for joining us tonight to find the one won't you just die! Die!